and welcome to another episode of Wine Secrets. My name is Peter and we're right here at Manor Estate Wines. On today's episode we're going to look at opening a bottle and the types of openings that bottles have. We're going to look at some brief tasting notes, I call it my 3x3 rule, and then how to close off a bottle to use next time. All coming up for you today. When you buy a bottle of wine it's going to have one of these three tops, a cork, a screw top, or a pressurized top. Now, the cork top's a little bit out of fashion now because cork being a natural product sometimes has crevices in it which actually allow the air to go through to the wine, not keeping it fresh. Screw top, great invention, 100% safe for wine, and of course a pressurized carbonated or sparkling wine top which has a cork and a cage over it is very effective for sparkling. Now, to open these wines is another story. Okay, now to open a cork bowl, we've got devices. You can't just pull it up with your hands, all right? So there's this very fancy looking device, all right? The idea there is to screw that into the bottle and then to leverage it up, all right? This one here uh, basically is a corkscrew and with it comes a, a, a knife kit, a bit more advanced, and of course there's lots of different devices to open a cork bottle. But, we're all about screw tops now, so we put those away. All right, so let's go to the screw top. Now, if you look closely at the top, you can see that it's perforated, it has actually a rim. So when you open, you turn, and you hear it releasing. There you go, you know quite well that bottle has not been opened before. All right, so once it's open, look, it's, it's a very simple matter of pouring. So opening a still wine is quite easy. Just screw the top. Now, with a carbonated wine, a sparkling wine or a champagne, it's a different story. It has a special arrangement uh, on the top here. It's, it's a cork held in by a wire frame. So let's open that, let's see how to do it. So there is a way to do this so that we don't actually um, damage the ceiling or lose control of any of the contents. All right, so first of all, we'll take off uh, the sleeve. Some people like to have the sleeve fully taken off, but I sort of like just the top off and leave the rest of the sleeve there. And now we unwind the wire cage. We take that off. And now, here's the trick. The trick is, when you've got your bottle, put your thumb over the top, hold it firmly, and slowly turn the bottle. And then it pops, and there you have your bottle. Perfectly ready to pour. Let's work out what to do with the bottles once we've opened them, all right? Because, you know, for instance, we've got a sparkling here. Now, if we leave it open to the air, obviously, it's, it's going to lose its effervescence. So, we've got these things, all right? This is probably what I recommend is the best gadget. So, what it actually does is you place that in the bottle, the sides go down, and you pump out the air. And once the air is pumped out, look, it's sealed. And now, the oxygen has been drawn out of the bottle, so in actual fact, we're creating a vacuum inside and that will keep your wine fresh for days. Fresh as ever, perfect to drink. You know, we all want to be experts at wine tasting and it is a complicated process, but I can simplify it for you. It, using my three-step rule, so we look at three attributes of the wine and break each of those three down to a further three attributes and then we have it. So, simply speaking, we look at the, uh, look at the wine, we smell the wine and we taste the wine and from that we can make up a whole lot of conclusions about the wine itself. So let's start with looking at the wine first. Okay, so firstly we have the look of the wine. Alright, so the three things we look at are colour, viscosity and the legs. All right, so now the color is really easy. Look at the wine and describe the color. Pick three colors, three by three rule. The second thing is the uh, viscosity. All right, so the way the wine interacts with the glass, the bigger the curve, generally speaking, the sweeter the wine is. And then the, the legs. The legs are the little lines that we find on the side of the glass, generally indication of the alcohol volume. All right. So that's the first part done, simple. That's the look. Okay, our second attribute is smell. All right, so what we do here, according to the three by three rule, we pick three plant smells and three other smells. For instance, the plant smell could be plum, 
berry, lime. And the other smells will be something like charcoal, ash, wood. Okay, once you've got those, you can describe the smell of the wine sufficiently. Okay, next we go to taste. Finally, we get a chance to taste the wine. Okay, when we taste the wine, look for three things. Okay, so you look for the acidity, the amount of tannins, and whether the wine is sweet or dry. So if, if the wine is acidic, you get a burning sensation in the back of your throat, you feel it. You feel it, either acidic or it's not, or anywhere in between. Tannins, usually you feel the tannins on the front of your mouth, between your lips and your teeth. If you get that sensation, then it's probable that you've got a high tannin level. And you might like that, you may not. And thirdly, is it a dry wine or is it a sweet wine? And you'll know that just by tasting it. Okay, we can all become experts at wine tasting. It's all about your experience and how you can describe it. And I hope my 3 by 3 rule helps you go through that process and even make you a wine expert. Well, I hope today's episode has helped you along the journey to become a wine expert. And we certainly look forward to seeing you next time right here at Manor Estate for our next episode, Wine Secrets.